the real problem in society is not whether we're teaching our kids enough science. Because let's say we started that tomorrow. Does that mean everything's okay? If we teach the 13-year-old better STEM education, they have a better STEM teacher, am I going to wait 40 years for that kid to become president and, or member of Congress so that we now have a scientifically literate country? No, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not that patient. For me, the real challenge, the real problem are scientifically illiterate adults. Adults are in charge. There are five times as many adults as there are kids in this country. Adults wield resources. Adults vote. Don't tell me, oh, let's fix the kids and everything will be fine. Fix the adults, then the kids will be fine. My field, astrophysics, may be at this point the only academic field where what I do is not counted against me. At worst, it's just neutral. Many other fields of science, spending your time that you might have been in the lab talking to the public, going on nighttime talk shows, going on comedic nighttime talk shows, is viewed as a, as a, as a, as a, as a violation of the contract between you and your lab experiment. I carry two titles. I'm a, a research associate in our Department of Astrophysics at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. I'm also director of the Hayden Planetarium. And in that capacity, it is fully expected by everyone around that I would be talking to the public. But more important, Carl Sagan basically did this first. There are spotty examples that preceded him, but he did it in the biggest, most significant way. And he cleared a field. And there's blood on that field. He was not warmly received by these activities. What, you're going to be on The Tonight Show? That's, isn't that comedy? But you're a scientist. Maybe you're not a serious scientist then. There's scientific cultural pressure against it at the time. But then what did we notice in my field? That members of Congress would be ready to vote on some budget and say, wait a minute, isn't that on a space mission that I, I heard about? I saw Carl Sagan talk about that. Is that what you, my, you're my constituent, is that what you were telling? Yeah, oh my gosh, let's do it. And all of a sudden, the tide waters rose for science funding. Members of Congress came to embrace the methods and tools of science and the fruits of its discovery. If you feel strongly about your religious philosophies, I will have nothing to say about it, unless you want to change the curriculum in a science classroom. And I would ask you, I won't fight you, I will ask you, why? There's no tradition of scientists knocking down the Sunday school door, telling the preacher what to teach. That has never happened. Atheists don't even do that. There's no scientists or atheists picketing outside of your church, say, or synagogue or, or, or mosque. That might not necessarily be true. There is no such tradition. So what is the motivation to try to take a religious philosophy and influence what goes on in science. You can get up enough people to influence school boards. Okay. Again, I'm an educator, so I'm here to tell you the consequence of that. If you substitute religious philosophy for science, there will be a generation of people who will not understand what science is. And they will be intellectually crippled from contributing to what the centuries have demonstrated to be the most efficient engine of economic growth that has ever been devised. And that is innovations in science and technology. Well, it was the first without being a scientist, so it was really tough on 